Hello there everybody, Sam's Trains here, welcome back to the railway and welcome to another review. Up today it is a brand new diesel from Backman. Wow, honestly I did not see this one coming, did you? Back in November 2019, Acuriscale announced a brand new model of the British Railways Class 37, and ever since then customers have been eagerly anticipating its release. And here we are in 2022, and all the evidence suggests that the Acuriscale Class 37 is basically finished and it's about to be delivered. And what happens? Backman comes along and they announce their own new tooled Class 37 model. Not only do they announce this new model, but they also immediately release it. Because here's one right now. A couple of versions are for sale already. Wow. So what do I think about this? Well, I feel pretty much the same as I do every time a duplicate product is announced. It's a little bit disappointing. It's a pity, really, isn't it? It's a pity that two of these companies have invested thousands and thousands of pounds, hundreds of thousands of pounds, in fact, into producing what will realistically be two very similar suites of models particularly when one of those two manufacturers could have invested those resources into bringing us a model that perhaps hasn't already been done. And instead we've got two Class 37s hitting the market at almost exactly the same time. It is a waste of resources. Now, am I suggesting that Backman saw Acuriscale's announcement back in 2019 and from that decided to make their own Class 37 model? Well, no, not necessarily. There is no evidence, that I've seen at least, to suggest that Backman's decision to create a brand new Class 37 was in any way influenced by Acuriscale. And in fact, in their announcement video, they did say that their Class 37 has been in development for three or four years, I think they said. Nevertheless, I feel that there is a chance, if not maybe even a good chance, that this new Backman 37 was in some way motivated by Acura scales. And at the very least, we can say that for the absolute majority of the new Backman 37's development, Backman will have been aware of the Acura scale offering, and yet they decided to continue with their project. And the release is a little bit suspicious as well. I mean, the timing and immediate release of this model it certainly looks a certain way, doesn't it? I don't think there's any getting away from that. On the other hand though, the 37 has been a major part of Backman's range for the last 20 years or so. It certainly seems possible that they just decided to upgrade it and they just got unlucky with the timing. That seems logical too, that certainly could have been the case. Having said that though, it is difficult not to feel bad for a Curoscale here, having put so much into their Class 37, only to find themselves losing a race that they possibly didn't even know they were taking part in. However, there is one very interesting distinction between the Backman and the Acura Scale Class 37, and that is the difference in price. And let me tell you, the price difference here is vast. The Acura Scale Class 37 is going to cost £169.99, and I believe that price is consistent at the retailers as well. As you won't be surprised to hear, the new Backman Class 37 is significantly more expensive. The RRP for the Backman version is £244.95. Although, do bear in mind, retailers do discount Backman models, and this one right here, for instance, I bought from D-Rails models at a discounted price of £208.20. Nevertheless, that is still nearly £40 more expensive than the new Acura Scale Class 37 is going to be. And I think that could be a problem for Backman, because at £40 more expensive, customers are expecting to see a significant improvement over the Acura Scale 37, which is £40 cheaper. And why do I think that is going to be a problem for Backman? Well, simply because the standard of the Acura Scale Class 55 was incredibly high. And if the standard of the Acura Scale Class 37 is anything close to the Class 55, then Backman could be in trouble there. 
Are Backman actually capable of producing a model that is so much better than the Acura scale to the tune of almost £40? Well, there's a lot riding on that, isn't there? Because if Backman failed to do that, then it's going to be quite damaging to them, isn't it? What message is that going to say? Backman's more expensive model wasn't as good as Acura Scale's cheaper one. It means that if Backman ever do this again, if they ever announce a duplicate release, well, people are not going to go for the Backman, are they? So really, Backman have put themselves under some very serious pressure here, haven't they? Why did they not try to match the Acura Scale price? It's almost a little bit arrogant that they've made their model so much more expensive. They're obviously very, very confident. But to date, we're going to find out whether or not they are right to be confident in that. So we're going to take a very close look at this model. We're going to inspect every detail of it. We're going to look at the detail. We're going to look at the performance. We're going to find out what this model is like. And then we'll have to wait patiently for the Acura Scale release to come along. And we'll find out which manufacturer has come out on top. So I've already talked quite a lot about the Acura Scale Class 37, but of course this is going to be a Backman review. This is not going to be the time to start comparing the two locomotives. Of course we do have a list of specifications for the Acura Scale Class 37, and we've seen a lot of artwork and samples and such, but I'm not about to compare this with a model that I don't own yet. There will be a time for that of course, but that is not today. This video is all about the new Backman 37. And thoughts so far is that the box seems alarmingly heavy. The old Backman Class 37 was awesome and it was also very, very heavy. I'd be really interested to see if this is even heavier. I think feeling the box, it's probably going to be. It does seem ridiculously heavy. Let me show you what I've got here then. So on the end of the box, the product code is 35-335. It is a Class 37 slash 4. That means a refurbished Class 37. It's number 37430. Uh, <clears throat> whatever that word is, I'm not going to offend you all by trying to pronounce it. It is, however, in the BR blue with the large logo, which is a gorgeous livery, I think. And this supports a Plux 22-pin DCC decoder. And if you're interested in the background of these locos, let me show you the back of the box, because there is a brief history. As always, if you want to, pause and read that. But for now, I think I'm going to break into this box, and we're going to take our first look at the new Backman Class 37. The loco that at least I did not know was coming. And there it is. It does look stunning doesn't it? It looks great. Even through the packaging, you can get a sense of the quality of the finish and also the extreme level of detail. I cannot wait to see what Backman have done with this. So let's pull the box out. Again, like I say, extremely heavy, extremely heavy. And let's take a look at the paperwork, shall we? So here it is, Class 37 locomotive owner's information. We've got a few specs on here, including the five pole twin shaft motor, which is a great thing to see. So that sounds quality. DCC compatibility, yeah, we've seen that on the end of the box. Um, it's got dual speakers, apparently, in all models. So if you decide to fit sound to these, or if you decide to buy a sound fitted version, you're gonna get some good quality sound. All wheels picking up, that's fairly standard, etc., etc. Accessories, you can see the location of all of the different included accessories. This appears to include snow plows, which is great. They look like they fit in place of a NEM coupling, so that's fair enough. Inside, accessories continued, even more accessories. In fact, there's several pages of it. Something here about bogey retention clips. Not entirely sure what that involves at this point, but uh, we'll have to look at the model to find out, I suppose. Running in, lubrication shows you the location of the lubrication points. And we've got lighting features. So we've got some switches on the base, which allow you to customize the lighting. And obviously under DCC operation, you have even further control over the lighting, which is awesome. Lots more information on this and on DCC fitting as well. <laughs> Spare parts, warranty, etc., etc. So that all looks fantastic. So it's a very accessories heavy user manual, isn't it? So I guess what we should do is start by taking a look at those. And it certainly is heavy. Look at that. Look at the number of accessories in here. So in the first bag, we've got all sorts. What haven't we got in this bag? 
beautifully painted snow plows, two of those, one for each end. We've got some fully articulated screw link couplings, they look great. Lots of painted pipework. These look like the, yeah, it looks like we've got the bogey retention clips in here as well, and the instructions did show how to fit those. Uh, looks like we've got some lamps as well, separately painted. Yeah, a lot of optional extras for you to fit. And that's not all because there's another bag in here and this includes some etched nameplates and also some etched builder's plates, I assume. That is a great quality inclusion. Obviously at this sort of price, you'd expect no less. This is an extremely expensive locomotive. This is the sort of feature I'm gonna be expecting to see today. So accessories looks great, quite a bit of work to do for yourself, but of course, obviously, a lot of those details will affect the running of the model on tight curves and such. So it seems quite sensible that some of those haven't been fitted from the factory. Okay, are you ready? Let's start taking a look at this. Let's lift up the lid and take our first look. Okay, so the first thing I've noticed is the finish of this model. There is a very, very noticeable satin sheen on the roof and also on the black paintwork on the ends here. That just screams quality to me. And I don't really remember being as impressed with that on the older Backman Class 37. So straight away, as soon as I've opened the packaging, I've noticed an improvement here already. So here we go. Let's lift this up. Let's get a real sense of the weight. Yeah, I mean, this is a heavy model, folks. And there it is. I mean, this does look beautiful, doesn't it? The finish and the quality of the paint is striking. There's, it's nothing short of striking. And it also seems to be quite a quality model as well. And I get the feeling that this is the angle Backman are going for here in terms of their competition with Acura Scale, because obviously the Acura Scale Class 55 did have a number of quality issues which were quite widely documented on the forums and in reviews and such. And in Backman's announcement video, there was a whole segment dedicated to the quality of Backman models with all of this detail, it would be easy to assume that this is a fragile beauty. But whilst you'll naturally want to handle your new 37 with care, Batman models are designed and built to be durable and undergo multiple quality control procedures before being delivered to you. So you can be confident when it comes to operating your model and know that it will still be looking great for many years to come. So Backman seem to be thinking along those lines as well. Maybe quality is going to be the area where Backman beat Acura Scale. But yeah, we're going to take a much closer look at this model in just a second. But first of all, here's a bit of background on the Class 37 in real life. Also known as the English Electric Type 3, the Class 37 was first introduced in 1960, and it was quite numerous, with over 300 examples being produced between then and 1965. The class didn't undergo very much trialling, really, before the design was commissioned. Instead, British Rail just ordered 42 of them in 1959 in a frankly desperate effort to modernise their fleet. And clearly it paid off, with many of these locos continuing in service well into the 1990s, long after most other Type 2 and Type 3 locomotives had been withdrawn. They didn't just get lucky though. Other locomotives of a similar design were known to be successful, they'd been well tested and well trialled, and some members of the class were refurbished in 1985, which ensured that some examples worked well into their seventh decade of operation. This model depicts one of the refurbished examples, as I said, in one of countless liveries seen following the sectorisation of British Rail. The Class 37s operated a mixture of passenger and freight duties, and interestingly some of them were fitted with boilers for steam heating, a feature which was carried forward from the steam era. These locomotives are still very popular ones, and countless examples still exist and can still be seen at various railways, including heritage ones. They earned themselves the nickname Tractors because of their distinctive tractor-like sound, and 35 have been preserved, while 66 are still in service, which is amazing. The remainder, of course, have now been scrapped. So here it is, up close and personal for you. Backman's brand new, only just released Class 37 in double O gauge. And as I'm sure you can tell, this is an absolutely tremendous model. It really is, and we're going to take a much closer look at that in just a second. First though, a really interesting question is this. If not motivated by a Cura Scales Class 37 announcement, 
why did Bachmann decide to retool their Class 37? Because I reviewed an existing 37 from Bachmann a year or two ago, and it was absolutely tremendous. The level of detail was phenomenal, the mechanism was really good, and the performance was second to none. Now, to be clear, is this new Class 37 from Bachmann better than the old one? Yes, absolutely. I think looking up close, you can see the improvements in the molded detail. Um, if we take a look at this grille, for instance, on the top, it does look significantly better than the old one. And that's not to mention the extra technology that we've got on board with this new model, the sound package, the lighting package. Yes, all of that is much better. But the fact is, the old Backman Class 37 was serviceable. And let's face it, there are loads and loads of aging Backman models in far greater need of a retool than the Class 37. And so I'm not convinced that this was not motivated by a Cura scale in any way. Of course, I could be wrong, but I am pretty confident that Backman have at least somewhat downplayed how competitive their decision to retool this locomotive was. And here's something you might not be expecting. I was very, very impressed with the weight of this new Class 37, but would you believe it is lighter than the old Backman Class 37? Not by much, but it is lighter. This new model weighs in at 515 grams, whereas the old one weighed in at 531 grams. So it's not that much lighter, only about 16 grams, but it is surprising that the new model is actually lighter than the old model. Anyway, let's take a close look at this model because, like I say, it is tremendous. The decoration is really good, not only in the precision of the paintwork, but also in the finish, and hopefully these shots will do that justice. Yeah, beautiful bit of shine to the bodywork, looks really quite metallic, possibly even the best I've seen. It looks really good, particularly on these bonnets at the front. Absolutely wonderful. The paintwork and the separation between the different sections is second to none as well. Look at the yellow ends, look at the grey of the roof joining the yellow and also the blue. The lining looks excellent as well. And also the tampo printing looks wonderful. Look how crisp these arrows are. Absolutely wonderful. The running number looks great. And then we've got the nameplate and also what I thought was the builder's plate. Um, they also look fine, even though, of course, we do have etched versions of the name and builder's plate, which is a really, really good inclusion. The decoration is relatively complex all over the model, really. We've got small printed details all over the place. I like these ones on the underframe. Yeah, they look pretty good. And of course, the axle boxes, which have been separately painted, and also they've got the embossed lettering on them, which just looks wonderful. But I think it really is the level of detail that shines on these locomotives. So let's take a look at some of those. We've got metal handrails around the doors, which look good and fine. Just as good as the old one, though, really, where the doors are concerned. We've got the separately fitted horns, which look absolutely fine. No problem with that. The ends of the model look pretty convincing with these very fine and very straightly fitted lamp irons, which look good. It's fairly safe to assume that all of these lights will work as well. And in fact, as we saw in the instructions, you've got quite good control over these lights, particularly on DCC. The buffer beams look relatively bare, but they're still pretty well done, aren't they? And with all of that detail fitted to them, you can imagine how good those are going to look. The buffers are made of metal and they're also sprung. So there you go, that's a really nice feature. And this model does not have any sort of annoying kinematic couplings. The couplings seem to be fitted to the bogies so that they will move with the locomotive naturally, which reduces the need for any complex over-engineered couplings, which I really like. The bogey detail is really good as well, and this is an improvement over the old Class 37, I think. Definite improvement in the fidelity of the molded detail and such, and we have got the inclusion of these metal chains, which is something that we've started to see quite a lot recently. And it will be interesting to see how those have been implemented into the model. Is the top of the chain fitted to the body, which will make the body removal difficult? I don't know. We'll have to find out later on. The underframe detail looks great as well. There is a lot of detail under there. Some of it quite subtle because it's not painted, but if you look for it, it is there, which is marvellous. The grills, most of these are just a part of the moulding, but as you'd expect, the quality of the moulding is high. We've also got this one here in front, which does seem slightly finer than on the older Backman Class 37s. Looks very good and realistic. And as I've already showed you, the fan grille up on top is very good. It is etched, made of metal, and well fitted as well. That's a quality piece. And there is a fan underneath there, a separately fitted fan, which is free to turn. 
yeah, as you can see. And I think on some versions of the model, not sure if it's this one or not, but on some at least, the Deluxe versions I think it is, those are actually motorised, which is wonderful. One detail that is particularly impressive is this tiny little window here, which affords you a view into the engine room, which has been detailed, at least it has behind the glazing there. So that is another major improvement over the previous Class 37. And I think the final impressive feature and major upgrade would be the cabs. So the cab exteriors are excellent. You've got much finer glazing and window frames on these new models with the equally fine separately fitted wipers on the outer windows there. But it is the interior, I think, that is really impressive. Look at the back wall, for instance. You've got some intricate print work going on there. Looks like it's even legible, would you believe? And then you've got all of the usual range of controls, which do seem to be more defined and more detailed than on the previous model. There's certainly some sort of turning wheel, which has been separately fitted there. Yeah, it's a very, very good cab generally, quite impressive. And I believe interior lighting has been included as well. So yeah, it's a great model. You will notice that there are no blemishes in the paintwork. There are no details that I've noticed at least that are askew. Nothing's dropping off, nothing's crooked. There's a lot to be said for that. This is an extremely expensive model, but certainly in the quality of the paint, in the detailing, and in the quality of the model itself, build quality and such, it seems, at least to a degree, you do get what you pay for, and that's fantastic to see. This is a better quality locomotive than the Acura Scale Deltic. So unless there's a major improvement in the quality of the Acura Scale Class 37, Backman might just have it when it comes to quality. But of course, only time will tell. For now though, let's move on. Let's talk about the mechanism. I'm gonna take a look at that. We're also going to see how this Loco performs. It's got a lot to live up to because the old Backman Class 37 was a marvelous performer. This has got to be as good, if not better, because this is a much newer and a much more expensive locomotive than the old one. So let's find all of this out. Let's get started. So there she is down onto the track, Backman's superb new Class 37. And the first performance test has already been filmed and I will show you that in just a second. Next though, I decided I would take a look at the mechanism and that is really where this loco shines. I was impressed by the level of detail, it looks wonderful, but it really is the quality of the mechanism and the design of everything inside, which is my favorite part of this model now. So let's delve into some of this. Now, before I start trying to remove the base keeper plate, I need to think about those fragile looking chains that are fitted to them. Now, these were a nuisance with the Acura Scale Deltic because they were sort of glued in place and you had to literally pull them out if you either wanted to access the axles or if you wanted to access the body for DCC fitting. Well, look at this new design from Backman. They're not glued in place. They're able to be unclipped very easily using some tweezers. They're just like this kind of snap fit. Absolutely fantastic. Look how easy it is to connect and disconnect those. So you've got what was a very fiddly and impractical feature on the Deltic, which is now a perfectly manageable feature here on the Backman Class 37, which just goes to show Backman's level of experience and also expertise. This is the solution. This is the solution to chains on bogies. Very, very good indeed. So now we can remove the base keeper plate, which as you can see is screwed on as well as just clipped on. Very, very high quality feature. That means that if the clips fail one day, we've still got the screws, so the loco will not be useless. And look at this underneath the base keeper, a metal chassis. This is a die cast bogey chassis, not just cheap plastic like we've seen from so many other manufacturers. Much, much better quality than that. As you can see, proper bearings on the axles, what quality that is, and there's pickups going to each of the driving wheels. Again, no fussy, over-complicated, over-engineered pickups here. We've just got standard wiper pickups, which is so much better. Body removal is a little bit convoluted because there are eight screws holding the chassis onto the body. Uh, yeah, that seems a bit excessive, but do you know what? Screws, not just clips. That is quality. And also the chains are not fitted to the body, which is a thoughtful compromise, I think, a bit of smart design. No, the chains are entirely fitted to the chassis, which means you can remove the body without having to worry about those. Again, very, very smart from Backman. 
The ease of access here though is spoiled very slightly by these connectors. We haven't got spring-loaded contacts for the lights and such, instead we've got these plugs which are fitted to criminally short wires which means you do really have to remove those if you want to get proper access to the chassis. Not that impressed with that to be honest. But here we have the relatively complex chassis here, a lot of circuitry going on on the top. We've got speaker one here, which I guess is for the higher frequency. And then you've got a much larger bassy looking speaker down in the chassis, which obviously will take care of the lower frequencies. It's going to create some good quality sound is that. There is the DCC socket, quite easy to access once the body is off. And then the cab lights and such are on a separate circuit board, as are the front and back lighting LEDs. Separate board with a separate cable going to them. It's quite nice and modular, I suppose. And then as you can see, the fan in my example at least does not have any motor attached to it. A spinning fan is a feature with the Backman 37, but you have to pay even more money to get the deluxe version, as I understand it. Frankly, I can't say I'm on board with that. This cost me over £200. This should have every possible feature on it. I think £208 is enough, don't you? Five-pole motor apparently is buried deep somewhere in this chassis. Obviously, I can't get a shot of it. It does say that it has a dual shaft on it, but I don't know whether it has dual flywheels. I would say if it does have flywheels, they're probably not massive because A, there's not much space, and B, I didn't really see any evidence of that during the performance test. In terms of gauge though, every axle is quite reliably coming in at 14.2 back to back, which seems nice and loose, quite a bit below the standard though. So it's a very well designed chassis, isn't it? The amount of thought that has gone into it is really clear to see. And given how complex the model is, it is really quite accessible, isn't it? I think with the exception of those really short wires on those connectors, it is perfectly serviceable and accessible, which is just wonderful. What a breath of fresh air. Right, so let's move on and let's show you the performance test. Moment of truth then. What is this like as a performer? Of course, there's an awful lot riding on this, so let's find out. I'm gonna set the direction to forwards and let's see if there's any life here. Here we go, turning up. All right, quite a bit of buzzing, but ignoring that, there was quite a smooth takeoff there. Yeah, that seems pretty good. Right, yeah, strange noise to it. Let me, uh, let me see if I can get into a better position so you'll hear it. So at the low end. Yeah, so slightly distracting noise. It's not the quiet, smooth <laughs> performance that you might expect, but at least physically, I guess it seems quite smooth. Uh, right, let's see what the speed is like then. So I'm going to run past you at 50%. Here we go. So that's half speed. I've got to say that seems quite sensible, doesn't it? Yeah, good sensible speed. Obviously, more speed available if you want it. But that suggests to me that this has been geared to run nice and slowly. Not too much speed, plenty of torque, etc. So that's good. Right, let's see what the low end speed is like then. How is this going to be for coupling up to wagons gently and such? Here we go. I'm going to try a crawl. Obviously, it needs running in. It hasn't had any running in at all at the moment. So it's going to take 30 minutes in each direction before it's at its best. And I will do that during the review. But I think we're, are we there? A bit more? So yeah, I mean, that's a pretty good slow crawl. Um, not very smooth, it is sort of jerking forwards rather than moving in a single smooth motion. But um, yeah, overall that isn't too bad. I would say with some running in, I can definitely see that getting better. We'll have to see if that's the case. Uh, in reverse, let's try again, a bit more smoothly if possible. Yeah, I mean, it's not bad. I mean, it's definitely got enough torque to move itself at the low speeds. Um, but it's perhaps not the greatest we've seen, at least not straight out of the box. Okay, in terms of lighting and features, um, I can see we've got a very warm, almost orangey light on the front when we're going forwards. And then we've got the red tail lights in reverse, and that's how this has been configured on analog mode. Unfortunately, the cabs, though, are remaining completely dark. Yeah, there is no lighting at all. Uh, on the interior, on analog, which is a pity because, of course, other manufacturers have managed uh, to make these cab lights work on analog. 
And here it feels like I'm sort of paying for a feature that I'm not able to make use of, which is a shame. And the same thing goes for the fan. On this version, at least on analog, I'm not getting any movement there, which like I say, is a pity. For over 200 pounds, you really want every feature you can get and some movement in that fan would have been absolutely tremendous, but sadly, that is not to be. So there we go, yeah, initial test, I've got to say the older Backman Class 37 is the better runner at the moment. Maybe this will improve quite a lot during running in, and then maybe this will be the better runner, but at the moment, that's not the case. But here we go, let's go forwards, 50% speed, let's see how it gets on. So I'd say that's going at quite a pace now, and it certainly looks fantastic on the track, doesn't it? Didn't notice any slowing down around the second radius there, and certainly there's no hesitation on the curves either, so performance is looking pretty good. The slow speed I don't think is quite as good as the old 37, but the high speed performance is absolutely faultless as far as I'm concerned. The lighting is okay, yeah, I mean we've got basic lighting here on analog, if you want to make use of the full lighting package though, you will have to fit your 37 with DCC, which is, yeah, it's not great, but it's understandable, I suppose. So I'm gonna let this run in. We'll see how it is after it's had 30 minutes at medium speed in each direction. Then we'll come back and try a bit of a haulage test, see what sort of puller this is. And of course, we'll see whether it's any better as well. So don't go anywhere, I will be right back. Okay folks, we are back and the 37 has been fully run in. So what do I think? Well, the performance is fine. Yeah, it's a good performer. It's not been cutting out or doing anything like that. The fact is though, it's just not quite as good as the old Backman Class 37. At least in my experience on this same controller, on this same track, the older model was more powerful, has more torque, better crawl, it's quieter, and it seems to be a little bit slower and more sensibly geared as well. There's nothing wrong with the gearing in this, but it is noticeably faster than the old 37, and that might explain why the crawl at the low end wasn't quite as good. However, I haven't tried the crawl since running in, so let's see whether it's any better now. So I'm gonna try and turn it up. To be clear, there was nothing wrong with the crawl before. I mean, overall, I would say it's an impressive crawl, it's just thinking of the old 37, uh, it's hard to be impressed by this as much because of how much better the old model was. <laughs> but here we go. So yeah, I mean, it's not dreadfully slow, it's not dreadfully smooth, you can see a fair bit of cogging. Like I said earlier on, not 100% sure whether this has got flywheels. The diagrams don't show flywheels, and I didn't see any flywheels during my disassembly. I would be very surprised if Backman hadn't included them, but um, I'm certainly not seeing any evidence of flywheels, for instance. If I cut it out, it stops quite suddenly. If it had some substantial flywheels, it would sort of glide along a bit before stopping like that. Um, so yeah, it's either not got them or it's got pretty small ones. Uh, I didn't feel confident disassembling the, the model any further to find out. But there is nothing wrong with the performance. It's perfectly acceptable, and at this speed, it's perfectly smooth. Nothing wrong with it at all. It's just not as good as the old model, and given how much more expensive this is, and given that this is a brand new tooled model, it's, it's just hard to be that impressed. The torque is not great either. Um, if I put my fingers here and turn it up, you can see it's really struggling to turn its wheels. In fact, there it's not. I have to keep turning up and it's only once we get to about 55, 50 odd on the controller that it starts to turn its wheels. So yeah, it's not a powerhouse, definitely not a powerhouse. And I reckon when I couple it up to these coaches, it is gonna slow down quite a bit on Gordon's Hill. That is my prediction. The pulling power itself is 0.74 Newtons, which should be around 42 coaches on straight and level track. Again, nothing wrong with that at all. However, it is quite a bit less than quite a few other models. For instance, the Hornby 57, the Dapol 52, the Helgen 58, Backman Class 20 even, those are all more powerful than this, which is a bit of a surprise. Anyway, let's go and couple. Let's see how the model handles coaches. Okay, let's go for a nice gentle coupling if possible. All right, <laughs> fail, <laughs> not particularly gentle but let's see if she can haul them off. So I think I'm gonna go for about 40 speed, given that this Loco is a bit faster than the old 37. 
and that should give us a comparable speed. So here we go. As you can see, it is moving what I think is, yeah, eight coaches with relative ease, at least on the flat. So on the middle line, I've got the old Backman Class 37, and I want you to look at this from the shot that you're seeing right now and tell me whether you can really notice a big difference. Because for me, you really can't. You have to start looking up close at some of the molded detail. You really do have to get in there to notice that the new 37 is much better. Also, let me take this opportunity to briefly show you the difference in performance. Let's get this to crawl for you. Yeah, you can see how slow and controlled that is. Yeah, I think it is better. I do think it is slightly better than the new one. And it is much more powerful than the new one uh, by about 25%. Uh, yeah, one Newton is the tractive effort with this. Plus, you might also notice that we have working cab lights, interior cab lights, that is, on analog, which is something that the new 37, at least the one I'm testing, is not offering. And then on the inside line, because Acura Scale is on everybody's mind at the moment, I've gone for the Acura Scale Deltic. Now obviously this is a Deltic, it's not a Class 37, but we can make some comparisons between this and the standard of the new Backman 37. I think basically the level of detail is comparable, I think the Backman finish is quite a lot better than the Acura Scale finish, and I think the Backman chassis design and the mechanism is slightly better than the Acura Scale one, at least in terms of serviceability and the intuitiveness of the design. Having said that, I think the Acura Scale performance is the same if not slightly better because obviously there's a lot more torque in the Acura Scale mechanism and obviously in terms of value for money, Acura Scale have massively beaten Backman here because this is a much larger locomotive, much much heavier, almost double the weight in fact, and yet it was so much cheaper than the new Backman 37. So at the moment it could go either way, couldn't it? I think there's a very good chance that Backman will have produced a better model than the Acura Scale Class 37, but I'm not convinced that they will have produced a better value model, and I think when you consider what the two models cost, there's every chance the Acura Scale may come out on top. Right, load test then, at a sensible speed, eight coaches up Gordon's Hill. Let's take a look. So I'm looking for slowing down, basically. And so far it's not doing too bad. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, 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 that's dramatically slowing down. So, yeah, the torque in this mechanism is not impressive. It is not impressive. I would say the performance is perhaps slightly better than average, but the pulling power is very average at best. To the point where I think if the Acura Scale Class 37 runs as well as the Acura Scale Deltic, then Acura Scale will have an easy win on performance. Nothing wrong with the Backman 37 at all, but it certainly is not an outstanding performer. In my opinion, it's very, very average. Overall though, certainly an outstanding locomotive. It looks wonderful, the level of detail is excellent, and it does have a good level of performance. I'm not trying to say that this is a bad runner in any way, perhaps not just as good as I was expecting. It is, however, an extremely expensive model, and do you really get what you pay for? Well, in some ways yes, in some ways no. Do other manufacturers offer better value models than this? Yes, absolutely, I think I've demonstrated that fairly well. But as a model, ignoring the price, it is absolutely tremendous, as I'm sure you can easily tell. Time for some ratings then on Backman's all-new Class 37. I think the level of detail is an easy five star for me. Yes, absolutely crazy. The decoration and the finish, absolutely wonderful. Sprung buffers, full buffer beam detail, including the screw link couplings, the option to fit snow plows, very impressive cab interiors, full lighting package, and a whole plethora of separately fitted parts. It's definitely an easy five star on detail. Performance is very good. It's an extremely smooth runner, but the slow speed performance isn't as good as we've seen, I think, from other models, and there's certainly not that much power in the mechanism. So under load, I do notice this loco slowing down a bit more, I think, than is normal. Not the most powerful loco in the world, but it's fine. The pulling power itself, 42 coaches or 0.74 newtons. It's okay, perfectly adequate, but not that impressive. 
It is less than the old Class 37 from Backman. Not impressive really with the pulling power, but certainly adequate. The mechanism though has to get a five star for me. It's pretty accessible. You've got proper turned metal bearings in a metal chassis, which is wonderful. The separately fitted chains don't get in the way of accessing the chassis or the bogies for maintenance or whatever, so that's fantastic. And of course there is a five pole motor. Very, very good mechanism. Similarly, the quality is five star. This is a very complex model, yet it has been assembled to the highest standards. Very heavy die cast chassis, no problem with the paintwork or decoration, no details dropping off it. I can't fault it, so it's got to be five star. The value for money though is really where this loco falls down because really this is at about the same standard or perhaps slightly better than the Acura scale Deltic that I looked at, which was the last very impressive diesel to be shown on this channel yet it is significantly more expensive with an RRP of £244.95. Uh, some retailers of course do sell at RRP so your retailer of choice might actually charge you that um, but I bought mine from D-Rails for £208.20. That does seem like quite a lot of money particularly given what other manufacturers offer for that price or less. So I've given it two star on value for money yet unfortunately it's very expensive for what it is I think. Overall though, still a very good score, 8.07 out of 10. Into the logbook it goes, yep, 10th place above the Backman V2 and below the Backman D11. I would say this is a slightly better model than what we've seen from the likes of Acura scale and such, but taking the price into account, obviously the score is quite a bit lower. Well folks, thank you very, very much for joining me for this review of the new Backman Class 37. Hopefully you'll agree that this is a wonderful model. I think my favourite aspect is either the decoration and the quality of the finish or the chassis design. I think probably the chassis design. Absolutely wonderful and of course so, so refreshing to see Backman packaging such a high quality mechanism uh, with their Locos now. And this is really quite consistent from Backman now. Most of their new releases do have a really top quality mechanism in them and that's exactly what you'd expect, particularly given how expensive Backman's models are now. So yeah, in some ways they are still too expensive in my opinion, but at least in many ways you do get what you pay for. So yeah, the value for money isn't as bad as it used to be from Backman, that's for sure. Although I think they could still do better. For now though, again, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. If you've got any thoughts on this model, if you've got any thoughts of Backman versus Acura scale, pop them down in the comment section. I do love to read them and I will get back to as many comments as I possibly can. For now though, you take care of yourselves and I will see you soon for another video. All right, cheers everybody, take care.